That's not the right overlay. Well, what the? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, I'm Zayori. I'm joined by Mott today. Hi, Mott. Hi, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Mott. <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing like a similar little tank top to him. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's bit, true. It's a bit nippy up here, though, yeah. so I had to put on the jacket. Very. Oh, wow, I like I like what you did there. It, it is. It's very <laughs> cold in the studio on this fine morning. But hey guys, we've got more Summit 2 SEA action, and this is serious. This is day two of the playoffs. First game, do or die. We've got some elimination coming yeah. up here, gods. Uh, Malaysia somehow find themselves in the low bracket, so <laughs> this is not where anyone expect them to be after an 11-0 group stage run. Uh, it's kind of brutal because you can go to 11-0 in the group stage, but then playoffs, everyone's on a clean slate. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, they'll be playing uh, the Australian team, CSW, can't say whips, and uh, best of three, but the loser will be going home empty-handed here, and the winner will have to continue trekking on through the lower bracket. So let's go right into it, see what's going on here with these picks. We got a little teaser earlier, and uh, well, we saw that Naga Siren first pick. So the whips, they'll get themselves some Naga action. Team Malaysia strike right back with a Brewmaster first pick and Lion. That's your net hero uh, on the Lion. So not pretty good opener, but... Mushi sticking to his guns with this Huskar Riki nonsense. I don't know, man. I I don't know either. Does does he realize like this is a pretty big tournament? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I you I, know. I just see this and think like, man, this guy, this guy just needs to like look at look at what's at stake and I mean, I guess in the big picture, like looking Radiant forward, like Ti five battle. is what matters. But <laughs> but still, like you're gonna get to Ti five. Playing well in tournaments like the Summit is what's gonna get you invited. I was to gonna TI5. Is, is that is that how it works? You just fuck around in every tournament except uh, Ti five. Is that the Dyer the gods team theory? Ban. No, so. it's not. <laughs> I, I, if I'm Team Malaysia, I'm thinking like, look, if we if we don't become like the most dominant team in SEA, like that. TI5 invite may go down the drain. Yeah, it's uh, it's not secure, that's for sure. But Ten seconds I'm remaining. curious, uh, actually, what the odds are. Yesterday, the the series that Five Team Malaysia played that knocked them down, 80-20. Yeah. All right, that's, that's better than what the odds were yesterday against, was it First Departure? And, uh, yeah, it was it was not uh, not going so well for Team Malaysia. So... It'll be interesting to see how they pair up against the playstyle of CSW. They're very, very cautious. Radiant yep. team. Very back. safe. The Naga suits their playstyle pretty well, I imagine. So, we'll see. They get the the Centaur for 2D. So we talked. We see his Bat Rider yesterday, but yep. Centaur Centaur's probably a bit better for creating space for Naga. Maybe we saw him play Centaur at least one game, I yeah. think. So it, th th I think really I would say those are his top two heroes that he's most comfortable on for sure. Five um, seconds. So so remaining. far. Nothing too surprising. I guess that's probably your KP here, uh, hero, Reserve the Naga, time. I mean. Yeah, I think so. Um, Musica plays like the safe lane farmer, but I don't think that's going to be the Naga. I think he's, he's more like the, the Miracle Mid Naga Siren, which should be KP. Glad to see KP not in his solo midweaver. That was a <laughs> dud. For like the second time in a row, I've seen him just being like, man. It did nothing. Like, it was so I, useless. He I just... He didn't play badly or anything. It's, it's just a weaver it's mid. Just, he doesn't, the hero doesn't really do much yeah. but damage. So you go mid, Dyer and that's where you pick. expect somebody that can actually do stuff. Do some stuns, knock down some towers, control some heroes. and ah, Weaver just does not, not bring that to the table. But here you go. Team Malaysia, they get a Wraith King. Probably their second support. Um, but time will tell. Now, unfortunately for Malaysia, they've got a stand-in again today. Uh, when they no, oh. Extinct is no longer on the team, so they, somebody knew. It was KS yesterday, and today it's Kench. Not somebody that I'm uh, too Ten familiar seconds with. Remaining. Yeah, I believe it's a former teammate of theirs who now works for Maneski, so Five seconds doesn't remaining. play for Maneski, but yeah, he's someone who knows, he's good friends with the team. He actually was their, their manager for okay. a, a small period time. of time back in Orange Esports, so very familiar with the players on the team, but not someone who strikes me as someone who's been playing a lot of Dota or any competitive Dota. Because <laughs> I, I actually talked to this guy. I'm the one you, like with the, like the MPGL tournament. Like this is the guy I talked to about. That. Oh, that's one of your your contacts, um, huh? I Radiant team. I don't think pick. he's uh, someone they're trying out to 
to replace Extinct in the team. He must just be someone that they could get as a, a stand-in. So, yeah, it's he's most likely going to be on support. We saw KYXY support yesterday, and pick. I think that's going to change today. Yeah, it was... <sighs> KYXY on support, it felt weird. It was it was weird to s it was weird to cast it, and yeah. I don't think he played particularly bad, but it just seemed the whole team was almost out of their comfort zone with uh, with their roles kind of flopped around. He did play Tusk in one game yeah. also. Which Tusk is and Wisp. So it was he played like polar opposites in terms of play style. Yep, it was uh, weird because like I mean like you say it just it seemed remaining. out of place, but also because he wasn't on just like a normal conventional like Skyrath where you just zone out your remaining. opponent and then right. buy your wards and stuff. Even Wisp is like a Sky very Rath unique Mage. support hero. Mm -hmm. So. It was Radiant team a, w a weird thing seeing him play that kind of role. Yeah, and the Tusk, he had some big plays, had some small plays, such as the, the life of a Tusk. But here are some fun picks coming out. The Shadow Friend, that'll probably yeah. be your Mushi hero. Oh, boy. And uh, there's the Skywrath Mage there for the Whips to Ten join their Earthshaker. Remaining. Good support duo. We've seen quite a bit of it. Uh, a lot of lane control, Five so some good space remaining. creators for this Naga Siren. Pretty obvious what the Whips are going for here. Some 4 Protect 1 action. We'll see what they get for time. their music a hero for the safe lane most likely and come on Leshrac. Uh, yeah, if I'm in Leshrac. I, I I think partly when they were picking that it was it was like the one game where you cast with Dakota it's such a good hero against the Terra Blade with the magic damage. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. being just AoE damage you clear out the illusions bang. really fast, so it was like kind of like a good Terra Blade counter. Against yeah. these kind of heroes like Brewmaster, Shadow Fiend, and Wraith King was to Eliza. I, nah, not not a good Leshrac game. I yeah, think. you're 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 right about that. Actually, I was being somewhat facetious, but yeah. I have every time I say music, I am always hoping just a little Ten bit that there could be some Carry Lesh action. I ne never forget. Funky. They banned out his Queen of Pain. It's gonna say there you go. That's the uh, <laughs> the music a hero. Yeah, the music is special. He loves that quap. So, whips. What are they gonna do He's with their final time. ban here, Malaysia? A little bit of flexibility with that Wraith King, but I'm pretty sure he'll be a support. So they will need... Uh, pro maybe they'll do an off-lane brew, Shadow Fiend mid, then a safe lane remaining. farmer? Or what are, you th what are you thinking here? Yeah, I, I had to say, Five I think that brew could remaining. go safe lane as well if they want to do that. Like, let's get him a fast blink dagger guaranteed, but... Okay. Who's okay. the brew Radiant player on Malaysia? Pick. KYXY and Ahio can both play it. So if it's off-lane, give it over to Ahio. Okay. Otherwise, KYXY... Um, could play it mid or safe lane, depending on where they look to lane it. Mushi, not really a brewmaster player, though. Yeah. So He, he avoids any mic micro hoover paced heroes. <laughs> yeah. As good as the, the guy is, he does have his, his flaws. Yeah. Just not his forte. But oh, this is a good place for Team Malaysia to Ten be in at this stage in the draft. They've, got draft. they've got some flexibility. Someone else that can make a little space for this Five Shadow Fiend, I remaining. think, uh, could be good. They've got a really aggressive support duo. Who would be a good core that Reserve would fit in time. here? Nature's um, Prophet still okay. Ahio plays a really good Nature's Prophet. Mm hmm. Yeah. It depends, it depends if they're going to be satisfied with the Brewmaster just being their main team fight. Like, if they want to get something else, maybe they want that, like, Magnus. Ten or seconds like. remaining. Whoa. And they take a okay. Pugna. In the words pick. of Merlini, Pugna's ownage. Okay. Are you on the Pugna um. hype train? He's either ownage or he's just a useless sack of shit. <laughs> like it's, there's no in between with Pugna. I always find like the games where he does well, I'm like, man, Pugna looks so legit. And then there's the other games where I'm like, God, that hero did nothing that game. Yeah, uh, it's it's true. And it looks like I would guess he'll be the. Si Actually, I've seen Pugna off lane a little Ten bit, and it's not very remaining. successful. But I've seen some teams try it. I would guess it's a tri laner on the Pugna and the Five safe, and remaining. it'll be the off lane brew with Ohio. Yeah. But um, I think you're right on that. The supports can look to Ooh. like move around a little bit. Another good four Ooh. protect one hero. So if Centaur goes safe lane. Ah, that's actually I think that's really smart. That's Centaur is a good, good safe lane here to have who can get the fast blink and create space. And when you've got the the Naga going mid, like there's you don't need another real carry or hard like actual damage dealing core. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it'll be Musica that takes the Centaur, and then Tudi will take his uh, kind of signature Bat Rider offline uh, off lane. So there you go. KYXY grabs the Pugna and Kench takes the uh, the Wraith King. It, it's Kench, right? That uh, Kenchi. Kenchi. That's oh, that fee. last character is supposed fake to be an eye. eye. Yeah. Ah, I, Kenchi. I gotcha. Yeah. Very, very creative, <laughs> Mr. Wraith King. Yep. So we get to see another 2D Bat Rider. He played a, that was the game they won against Invasion when he was on Bat Rider yesterday, I believe. Ten mm -hmm. seconds I think so, remaining. yeah. Uh, it's. Like I said, I, I've seen 2D play Bat Rider and Centaur, remaining. I think, more than, than any other hero, almost. Oh, yeah. I kind of want to want to dat Dota his <laughs> recent heroes just to see how how much he's he's rotated around. And, oh, I've got to... 
You know, somebody made the uh, the minimap icons on this computer Prepare default to like battle. really big, giant. I think it was Dakota because he's yeah. blind and old, but. Um, I'll, I'll miss stuff because of it, because like the dots just overlap in each other, so I can't tell when the yeah. dots actually like engage. See, I like another. the middle ground. Merlini likes like thirteen hundred or yeah, something ridiculous. I like nine hundred. That's okay. so it's a little it's a little bump. I think default is six hundred, so I, I like them a little bigger. But this is yeah. about as big as I like to go. I'm not like fussed enough to like actively change it sometimes, but then I'll like I'll notice like oh I didn't realize the fight broke out because the minimap icons were so big. Yeah, yeah, it, it it gets a little. I think I'm on the default 600, at least on here. Yeah. I roll with the 1300 over there. <laughs> I roll with the 1300. It's no problem. But we'll have the SEA pause come into play, of course. And uh, the Australians look to fix their pings and whatnot. They use this like uh, little routing program to help them actually get better pings to SEA, so it's not as bad as it was would otherwise be. Ah, okay, that's good like to know. What the fast or something? I don't I don't know how it works, but apparently it just makes you're routing a bit better to the SEA servers. Okay. You know, I'm I'm trying to look up the stats, and 2D is one of those players that is under his his name on uh, Dat Dota is player three four five two seven four six. So if you're ever trying to look up 2D, just a, <laughs> an FYI that he's just a bunch of numbers. But <laughs> look at all the centaur. centaur. Yeah, <laughs> this guy plays, plays so much centaur. centaur. <laughs> it's it's a little bit gross actually. If it's not a centaur, bat rider, or puck, you're you're pretty much out of business. The occasional tide, your <laughs> your occasional Magnus, but oh boy. All right, let's introduce some rosters here. Ready inside, we've got Team Malaysia. It'll be Net playing on his lion. Mushi takes the shadow fiend, and Kenshi he'll be here on the wraith king. Kyxy he'll take the pugna. He'll probably be your safe lane farmer as Mushi rotates mid. And yeah, getting that uh, wraith band set of GG branches. Ohio heads off lane. He's got his brewmaster. On the dire side, we've got the, the Aussies. In the top lane, we have Musica playing the Centaur. We've got Risk playing the Support Skyrath. We'll have Godot on the Earthshaker. Mid lane is going to be KP or KFini on the Naga Siren. And off laning will be Tudi, as talked about, on that Batrider. Boots first for him. He went down Portland Observer Ward. Actually, tricked Team Malaysia because he fireflied down some trees. So I think they kind of couldn't tell where he put the ward because the they just wasted begins. a sentry in there, their own jungle. But not the end of the world. Uh, a little a little bit unfortunate. But yes. in my game. Yep. I wonder what those characters after 2D's name mean. Could be anything. Could literally be anything. <laughs> You're right on that. <laughs> so fairly straightforward lanes, though. I don't think anything too out of the ordinary based on uh, how the draft settled down. Offlane Brew, Offlane Batrider. I guess the Offlane Brew feels a little weird, but I've seen quite a few teams do it. Against the Tri-Lane, will be a little tricky. Means he won't have a fast blink, but down bottom, Pugna should be able to knock down this tower pretty quickly, so that'll be a little bit extra gold. Uh, coming the Brewmaster's way, and I have some faith in Ohio. Find a little bit of farm, and it does take a bit of finesse, though. Uh, play the Brewmaster in this kind of a situation, not feed, and then also make a recovery and still get a blink dagger at a reasonable time. Yeah, he's got all this region, but the lane, the block did not favor him. Something in the off lane blocking is actually pretty important, and there's also pulls available, so CSW should be able to like, prevent him getting much levels at all here, which is really kind of rough for Ohio. Mm -hmm. And the mid lane, Naga versus Shadow Fiend. What a matchup. Mushi should have a pretty good time here. He's kind yeah. of passed the hardest part already. He's gotten those initial last hits, so he's already uh, yeah, got a lot of extra damage over that Naga. Yeah, that just, yeah the first creep able to winning that helps so much, and he, he's going to get really farmed. He can just get some levels. Get I mean, he's going to dominate the CS for now, and then once, he's, once he gets like level 5, he can push out the wave with raises, fall back, farm the neutral, stack the big camp, and... He's going to outfarm the Naga Siren pretty heavily uh, for the early to mid game at least. Mm -hmm. So they'll use that kind of on the back of the Pugna who... We'll see what build he goes for. I kind of like the mech first Pugna style when you're playing this more aggressive mid game fighting. But I think I'm biased for mech. I feel like I say they should go mech almost every game. Yeah. So They have the Shadow Fiend who the popular build has been mech on as well. Oh as well. yeah, that's all the rage these days. And Mushi was like the first person to do that over in uh, Team DK. So I okay. wonder if that's... The plan for Mushi, but maybe with the Pugna he's going to say, cool, I can just go for my damage. Also, well, if, if he ends up going the mech, though, what does that open up for the Pugna? I mean, you think in first um, item Ags, I guess you can always rush a Necro Book. Yeah, if you want the Necro Book for the push, Ags BKB, just so you're nice and tanky, uh, is, is always pretty good. And Oh, Net will actually get the D Ward here. All right. There you go. It's a successful Lion. Even pretty lucky with those, uh, those uphill hits. 
Musica getting some good farm in the safe lane as we would expect. Ohio finds a double damage rune and he'll get his first last hit of the game uh -huh. here at the two and a half minute mark. Oh, baby steps, but a little bit of progress. This will be a really fast centaur blink though. He's already got his tranquils up. Yeah, he's having a good time up there. And uh, bottom lane, Tootie's also having a good time. He's getting a lot of XP and farm out of this lane. Level three and a half, and he can fall back to the jungle at any point, but he's probably thinking like, I don't really need to. They just keep giving me these, these creeps in my tower, so... I think Malaysia's supports have maybe not done the best job of zoning him out and keeping this creep equilibrium pulled back, because yeah. Tootie... Like, you should not be having a tri lane against an off lane Batrider and have Batrider already level three and a half. Some mistakes were, were definitely made. Not the best zoning support duo. Wraith King, he can only do so much, and... I guess Lion's okay, but not, not quite at the level of something like a Skywrath Mage. Not nearly as spammable with, uh, with his abilities. Yeah. He will pull, though, try to get a little bit of link to go back. He'll probably do the double pull, find himself some, some Alpha Wolves there. Uh, KYXY getting decent CS. Boots Basilius up already on the level 4 Pugna, Ohio. Yeah, still in Stroke City. Skywrath Mage is just getting this non-stop irritant. Yeah. And Oshiga gets a nice little double pull off, so... Yeah, the Skyrath just zones while the Earthshaker pulls, so Godot can get some early boots, so they're going to share the XP a bit, and uh, they will even get to kill this big Dark Troll Summoner, which is a good chunk of gold for someone. Yeah, big prize here, looks like Risk will be the one to grab it, but I don't think there are any other stacks in the Dire Jungle waiting for the Bat Rider quite yet. Oh, who's going to get it? They fought over that one, man. Like, <laughs> 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 that last scrap of food on the table, and they both wanted it. Yeah, but no stacks in the Dire Jungle, so nothing for the Bat Rider to retreat to, but hey, speak of the devil, Tootie, he gets stunned up, now hexed by Net, this will be your first blood, and Kenshi will draw it on the Wraith King. Oh, Tootie oversteps his bounds that time, they pop their clarities, and happy with that first blood draw as KYXY presses the lane. Yeah. Must have gone in to contest the pool, because he had creeps following him as well, and just got chased down there. Yep. Doesn't the boots, but... Lion himself net with boots, so he managed to keep up. So nice first blood, getting the kill on the Batrider there. Batrider's doing fine, but just getting the first blood gold opens up a bit of space Dyer's to push when you've got a Pugna. Is under and uh, this T1 tower already trying to take some pot shots here as KOX no. has fast arcanes up for his lane. Yeah, great item in this scenario on the Pugna. Let's just spam out that Q very effectively, and even just a quick pick on the Batrider. He's not even in the grave for that long. You see how much damage they can lay into this tower with only level three Nether Blast. So. Get some nice gold for the team going on, Tootie. Oh, the flank is real. Yeah, he fireflies up, but gets stunned by Kenshi. Now Nets on his way in. The decrep is there. Earth Spike gets another kill on the Bat Rider. And now with him in the grave, this should be a pretty easy tower push. Yeah, that was a bit cocky from him. I don't know if he just wasn't expecting a decrep. Not to mention Net was in that nice little position to the west there. It's made the dire offlane a lot harder because of that free area to the left side of that T1 bottom tower, like that mm -hmm. you can get ganked from. I mean, it does work in your favor sometimes, but. Situations like that, it just allows Net to stay there hidden and come out when he's ready. Yeah. So, checking in on the mid lane, Mushi will go for his kind of signature mech build here on the Shadow Fiend. Uh, out farming KP pretty nicely. Dyer's 35 and 14 versus the 28 and 2 Naga. Up top, Ohio. He'll get dove. Fissure sets it up. Musica comes in, connects with his rotation. It's an easy pick on the Radiant offline. And Musica will attack. walk away with a new fresh kill under his belt. Kenshi rotates up, but nothing he can do to save his friend. Centaur gonna, yeah, kind of stuck under this tower. TP from the brute, but... Oh, maybe? No, beautiful Fissure breaks it up. Even Lion TP, but they have no way... They have another stun, actually. Um, they're gonna lose vision because it is nighttime, and Trinkle attack. Boots allow Musica to escape. Yeah. The chase is... <laughs> they're actually going for this. There's another Fissure soon. Okay, it's going for the Totem. Three Hero Totem under the tower. Musica looks for a hookstock. We'll get stunned up first, though, attack. and... They actually chase him down, somehow getting the night vision they needed, and Risk now walks back in a third stun from Kenji. This magic one doing work, and Risk. One more right click, Mushi wants it, and Risk has no boots. Yep, Radiant's Mushi will find it. He's got some red attack. boots, eats that bounty rune, and Dyer's that whole time, Pugno is able to push attack. the bottom tier one tower. Now with this rotation from Mushi, Ward comes down in the lane. He'll cut the creep wave, and Malaysia. Yeah. They want Radiant's an early edge here, and looks like they'll get it with attack. two tier one towers. That was really well played. Kenji just knowing he could keep on chasing and somehow got... I didn't think he was getting that stun off. Yeah, I think it was just because of the way they moved. They kind of went this way, and he did this kind of loop around here, and they cut yeah. him off, used those angles. They brought their protractors. Dyer's top tower is under Good attack. stuff. So Pugna spamming out that Nether Blast. Tier on tower, back to back. Looks like nice lead for Team Malaysia right out of the gate. Is the the death ball is real is already here, Gods. Yeah, and Central dying is actually pretty nice because he was going to have a 7-8 minute blink dagger, and suddenly... 
you just slow it down by a minute or two and it just gives you a little bit more breathing room to bring down all these tier one and even maybe start working on some tier two towers mm -hmm. before the blinks up. Yep, that's it's kind of the ideal hero for them to, to get a kill on right now. So worth the risk there and certainly pays yeah. some dividends. Ohio takes over mid lane, so he'll get a little bit of an opportunity to farm, maybe find some recovery XP. Net moving around in the jungle is Mushi's up top, and it looks like he's got his mech complete, so he'll head home, pick it up, and uh, be ready to fight another day. So where does that leave Pugna? 700 gold, one Bassy Arcane Boots. Doesn't look like he's picked up too much. Hmm. I feel like Necrobook hmm. is where he's going this game. Yeah. But it's yeah. always a little scary because you're kind of squishy, so you can get burst down by a Centaur Blink, but if you're pushing, definitely Necrobook's a good item. Yeah. And looks like the Malaysia plan is just uh, knock some towers down, get a huge amount of map control before this Naga really comes online. We'll see what build uh, KP ends up wanting to go for. Just a Kila Boots bottle with a Quelling Blade right now, 1100 gold. May stop off for drums or just try to rush that Radiance Dyer's out as quickly as possible. But attack. Malaysia, they're not stopping anytime soon, baby. Tier 1 tower in the mid lane, taking a lot of damage already. KYXY still doesn't even have the level 4 Nether Blast, but that's not going to slow them down. Tier 1 tower will certainly fall. It's a matter of when, not if. Yeah, they're just taking turns tanking it. Mushu will pop his mech in a second. Fortified. And they'll get some pretty good value Dyer's out of that. Middle tower is under attack. CSW are on their way in, and even pulling the Batrider out of lane now, where CSW feel like they needed to need to mount some kind of defense on these towers. This is time 2 he's not Musica farming his blink. Here, though. Musica's got the money for his blink, but he's got no TP. He has, can stampede, but... Dyer's middle tower, tower goes fallen. down, net comes in, Earth Spike on one, connects on risk, but now KYXY is there, Stampede used defensively. That'll keep him alive, Mushi clears up the creep wave with some shadow raises, and that'll be the end of it. But man, they force out that force Stampede to do very little. Yeah. So, all T ones down, Centaur will have the blink now for the T2 tower defense, but even with the Centaur blink, it's not going to be as easy as you'd like to fight into the Malaysia side when they have got that mech on Shadow Fiend. Like going on the Shadow Fiend yeah. to start things off, he's nice and tanky with 900 HP. Has an Ogre Club now back at base, so he's going to be really strong himself, and then you can use that mech to help save teammates who maybe get initiated on at the same time. Yeah, and you know, we were talking about Ohio in the offlane, and how's he going to recover? Radiance Knocking down towers tower seem to be attack. that vehicle. We're 10 minutes in. He has 21 CS and 2,000 gold. 1-1 one, one, and 0. This has ended up working out pretty well for Team Malaysia. Their offlaner is 700 net worth up on the Batrider, who had a substantially better laning phase. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, Batrider just 650 gold here. It's gone for, like, the Magic Stick. I mean, Trinkle Boots, I think, is fine, but he needs to get his jungle farm on. He needs that blink for the team. Yeah, he will go for a double stack here, finds himself some wolves. So we'll start clearing out this jungle, but, yeah, and, uh, he's, he's kind of fallen off a bit. 0, 2, and 0. Oh, not the best start for Tootie. It seems Malaysia happy just to spend a few minutes farming, getting a few more levels. They've seen, seen the Centaur blink, I believe, and also, well, they, they know anyways. Like, it's a safe lane farming Centaur. He should have it by now, and smoke, smoke, smoke galore. Both yeah. teams. Two for the Radiant, one for the Dire. Yep. Looks like Pugna does have a staff of wizardry, so Necrobook probably in KYXY's near future here. Mushi kind of playing back and forth here with 2D mid. But I think Malaysia will just slow it down a little bit, get their next round of core items up before they force anything. And uh, I was going to say that Ohio Blink is probably part of it, but he's got it now. So perhaps now they start utilizing that primal split a bit more. KP is getting a lot of space on this Naga, though. 2,400 gold up in 11 minutes. It's going to be that straight radiance. I think a game like this, it's it's fine. Like the drum seems very kind of more, much more situational if you can actually fight early, but this kind of passive play oh. line. Bottom line gets caught up by the blink on the centaur. Yep. It's a two-man gank squad. He was just down there farming trying to maybe work on... An, oh, he's just working on getting us level six. That's what Malaysia had slowed down for. Wraith King was off solo farming top to get his level six, and Lion was just bottom trying to get his level six yeah. before they grouped up again. Interesting build from the Wraith King going for two points in stats and skipping the aura altogether. Not too often you see the double stat build early on. I think you usually see the one stat and the Vampiric Aura. I think yep. just the one stat is enough to give you that extra Wraithfire Blast without Arcanes. Now he's got Arcanes, so it's like, yeah, it's kind of really need these stats. Yeah. I I'd definitely look towards him getting Vampiric Aura max base out. But yeah, really good for the. It helps it like that. That top fight where he got those extra kills. He threw Dyer's three stuns somehow. Like, he did have a magic wand which helped Dyer's. out there. But, uh, the, the extra stat points probably gave him an extra stun there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a fair point. 
But here we go. Creeps in the bottom lane. It'll be Malaysia pushing this tier 2 tower. They've got the nether ward down. Mushi will rotate over from the mid. Mech at the ready. Power treads here. And, well, he's got his level 11, so he's ready to requiem some souls. And put some hurt on his CSW at Musica. Ooh, that's a double damage rune. Blink dagger. Mech gets popped. Mushi starts chipping at the tower. Musica looking for the right angle to initiate, but Kenshi, he'll find him. Can't get the stun off, but forces him to blink defensively. Meanwhile, Ohio sees that. He hops right in. And gets silenced as the Stampede flies through. 2D can't find the opening, and no split from Ohio, but does not die. Oh, finger on 2D. He's Ooh. 20 HP. He'll survive. Kenshi stuns him. It's going to zone him out to get the tower, tower now. Yeah. Tank close to getting a couple kills, Dyer's but tower not getting kills fallen. getting the tower. The entire time KP is still farming, so for CSW, that's uh, I'd say that's okay. They stayed alive, they stalled, and they bought KP more time. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's still Malaysia who are getting further and further ahead. It's just that Naga Siren effect where there is that always that potential for Radiance Radiance. top tower. Yeah, is under certainly. Attack. Now, the thing about Radiance, as uh, I think we've talked about before, is... It's not an, an instant win kind of an item. There's still going to be this window where KP will need to use the Radiance to farm up and get scary. And I think Malaysia have a good 10 minutes or so before that Naga will, will start to get yeah. really scary with these Radiance core items. Top so tower is under the question is really, can they do crippling damage by that point? And with only two, two Tier 2 towers remaining, they're, they're doing pretty well in terms of being on the clock against this Naga Siren. Pugna went for a Force Staff, not the Necro Book. Okay. We're getting a little utility here. Every like the necro books I've seen recently just seem to like feed more gold than they're worth now. Like with the 200 gold bounty, with a decent chunk of XP, like, they can definitely help bring down towers. But I think it was one of the games yesterday where there was someone who got fast necro three and just fed, fed like a good five or six yeah. high value necro kills. And I'm just like sitting there like thinking like, okay, it helped push a tower here or there, but was it really worth it? For, like the, like he was probably fed like two to three hero kills worth of necro gold. Yeah. But I think after this, Pugna, Pugna just tanks up now. He goes BKB, maybe Ag Scepter after that, but I think the BKB is also a good option. Okay. So much nuke, magic nuke damage. Well, now Blink Dagger's up on 2D, so they will have a lasso initiation. 2D's been very quiet this game. Still 0-2-0. Zero, and zero. They just smoked up. It'll get revealed attack. by Musica from the low ground. Hops in, stun on net, but Ohio, he's there to follow up. They'll drop the line right away. Defensive stampede used. The dunk from Godot. Ohio won't be able to get off a split. They kill the Centaur to make it a one for two. Stun onto Godot. Kenshi, will he have the damage to find the kill? He will. That makes it a two for two. Now the tower will be the target of choice. Glyph comes out, but KYXY will continue laying in the nether blasts. Again, okay five for CSW. Tower. They trade evenly. Uh, they kill the Brewmaster before the split just barely, and Naga Siren the entire time was farming, Dyer's even split pushing the bottom lane. If she goes down there, throws a Requiem. That's an interesting one. Hmm. The yeah. tower was picked up by the die, so at least uh, KP did not get the last hit on it. Yeah, interesting play by Mushi. Also interesting to see him pick up uh, the, the recipe, and there you go. Grabs the Mithril Hammer. So that'll be a BKB now out on the Shadow Fiend. Perhaps <laughs> makes Mushi a bit more scary. But now, only one out of tower remaining. Yeah, Mushi's really farmed. He's also super tanky. 1300 HP with the, the strength treads and like that's where CSW have no real way of actually fighting into the Malaysia push because of how tanky Mushi is. And Mushi might bump into the Naga. They're in the same area. Musica rotating his way over but Mushi, good map sense. Will move to start to rendezvous with his team. Pings out the Naga. There's help inbound. The net comes out onto Mushi. Mystic flares there. A lot of damage to follow up, but Mushi lives. Mech goes off. Now Ohio comes in. This time he'll get off the split. Naga sings the song, but hey, guess what? The Bruce split does not care so much about the Naga song of the Siren. Now Musica taking some damage. Boulder will come out, and they should be able to find the scent targets off the Stampede. Well, they will drop the Naga Siren with the... Uh, Finger of death there, Ohio blinks forward, gets the crit. Now Tootie grabs the lasso, will try to high ground Ohio, can't quite get it. And that creates some space for the teammates to come in, but I think Tootie will still live. Nice series of pickoffs for Team Malaysia, and they get a couple of core kills that were much needed. Yeah, they just, that's where Mushi's just raw HP baits kind of CSW into thinking they can get a kill and get out, but he is just so damn tanky. That's like effectively a good 1600 attack. HP with the mech, not to mention all the extra armor he gets. And yeah, it's just, he was just too tanky for them to kill fast. And after that successful skirmish, we'll see the last of the outer towers Dyer's for CSW tower going down. Nat will get the last hit on that one. That takes him about two-thirds of the way to his blink dagger. Pugna beefing up, as you talked about. Now with the Ogre Club, probably a beginnings of a BKB. Kenshi, I think he'll be looking towards a blink with 1,700 gold. In Ohio, he'll just move right into a Vlad's. 
So everybody on Malaysia getting their core items that they want. Curious where Mushi will go after this, uh, now that his BKB is done. But Radiance top pretty tower good for the Radiance side, at least. Uh, out of the gate here, 17 minutes in. Holding on to that 7,500 gold lead. Right. Absolutely. It's kind of the position we saw Invasion yesterday against CSW, where they take down all the outer towers one by one, get complete map control, and put CSW in this position where they're just defending the high ground. And <laughs> CSW seem pretty comfortable, or at least pretty used to being six towers down uh, at like 20 minutes in. So we'll see if they can deal with it. The Radiance is online now for Naga, but not. Yeah, it's an okay time, 17 minutes. Not bad by any means, but nothing to write home about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's about, about average, I guess you could say. A little slower than average. Now we'll see perhaps a skirmish break out around the road. Fit Kenshi in the front lines, but he does have an ultimate available despite being low on health. CSW not so interested in perhaps falling for the bait, and they will back up and take their high ground. Yeah. I feel they really need the full stuff on the Batrider to start getting any pickups. Tuji's only been involved in one kill. I mean, that, the team itself has only had four kills in true CSW fashion, but... That's still a problem, though. You don't yeah. draft the Bat Rider to sit back and farm passively. You pick that Bat Rider to find pickoffs, set up kills, and make space for the Naga, which 2D just hasn't been able to really do yeah. effectively. He's not bad for defending the high ground because of that lasso. Kill, but we'll see if that's going to work here. Engaging into a pug board, not to mention, like I said, no full stuff. So, Bat Rider is good at defending high ground if you've got the full stuff and you can get the quick pickoff, but yeah, not something that. CSW are ready to, to do. Yep. And they're just going to juggle the tower attack. aggro, spamming that Q. There's no glyph, so this is just free damage from KYX. Naga's being annoying. He's creep skipping, will take out the creep waves, and this is end of your push. Yeah. At least for the, for the time being. It ends the push, but they still do a decent amount of damage. I mean, they do 50% to that tier 3 tower, and they don't lose anything for yeah. it other than a bit of time. Not bad. Yeah. Okay. Wraith can get his, his blink soon, and that'll help as far as engaging goes. Because Ahari doesn't want to be blinking in first, because if he blinks in first, he's going to just straight up ulti. He can't get off the clap because he's going to get fissured, silenced by the Ancient Seal. Mm -hmm. If the Wraith can go, in, can go in first and take a few spells, bait out a fissure, it means Ahari, when he blinks in, there's a better chance he can clap ulti. Yeah. And we've seen how tricky it's been for him throughout this entire game. It's like the Skywrath has just gone in for him. He blinks in and gets Ancient Sealed almost right away. Exactly what the Skywrath needs to do, but is shutting Ohio down uh, quite effectively. Now we'll see a smoke rotation from CSW, 2D. Comes on the Firefly. A bit too late. They, yeah. MY already headed through the top rune area, looking towards the Dire Jungle. They get pinged out, so... Unsuccessful smoke rotation from CSW. The music shows bottom lane, so Malaysia will probably infer that. The rest of CSW are kind of sitting behind him or near him. Isn't exactly the case, but... It means that Malaysia will look to just not get baited. They want to ma mostly just focus on breaking the base right now. They don't care to go for some kills that don't really matter too much for them. Naga has to start creep skipping again this middle lane. Uh, there's going to be at least one or two creep waves, which CSW going to have to defend, but you need to get that. Illusion going to come in net, and Mana Drain breaks it. So There you go. They were ready for it this time. Yeah, you need to should Radiance be sending more, but I, his illusion's about attack. to expire, so it's just a bad time. Here we go, Mushi gets caught by the lasso, Godot comes in, hits a dunk, does a little bit of damage, but Musica, he takes the finger and the Requiem. Pandas will be able to bring him down on the other Radiance side of the fight. Uh, looks like the Tornado comes out onto the Earthshaker, and Dyer's just trying to zone him out. Tier 3 tower Dyer's falls, there is a glyph for the Dire. Fallen. They will have to save it for Barracks, but now the Nether Blast fly through, Naga. Dyer's not here, and on her way back, but she's booking Dyer's it. Not map. enough mana to TP. Oh my gosh, gods. That means not enough mana to Song to do anything. Naga's trying to creep skip again. We'll TP home now, but this Rex is done for. Yeah, this is a Dyer's little scary, though. Get the melee barracks. Fallen. Naga finally makes it to the base, picks up her BOTs. They will stick around to get the ranged barracks. The scary Dyer's thing here is they forced out the glyph also. So this is a, like a five minute window, four and a half, I guess, where. They know they can just keep spamming those nether blasts on the high ground, and there's nothing CSW can do about it unless yeah. they want to extend way out of the base. Malaysia maybe even go for, for Roshan before they go for the next push. It'd be pretty easy. I, it's always tricky against the Bat Rider, and there's a lot of good, there's a lot of good like anti Roshan heroes, Bat, Centaur, and even the Naga Siren Song. But it, they've just so far ahead as far as items go. Mushi's really big. Kenji has Blink Dagger. Mm -hmm. Blink going to be coming soon on your line for Net. Net's really kind of struggled this game. He's going to have a Pretty late blink dagger, he level seven only. And he, he kinda wants levels because the short cooldown mana drain at level four is what's gonna help against these illusions. Yeah, just spamming it out. There's a BKB on the uh, Pugna and old Shadow Fiend, he's gone for a demon edge, so I imagine that uh, this'll be a Daedalus coming out from Mushi, but 
No, it'll be an MKB. Okay. Interesting. Anticipating potential evasion from the Naga, but that's, I don't... That's like way... Tough. I don't think Malaysia want to take it that late. Yeah. yeah, that's the interesting part. But Mushi initiated on by Musica, and it just tanks it up. Yeah. No problemo. That's kind of what we, that was like one of those first departure style Centaur stuns we saw yesterday where you just go in, stun, double edge, and back off just to be annoying. Yeah. Just to stall, buy time, and maybe deter a push if, if you get Mushi down to half... It gets him down to half HP, but here's the bottle charge to heal back up. Yeah, bottle and mech. Mushi will go up top, finds himself a regeneration rune. He'll be pretty satisfied with that as the rest of Malaysia, they're grouping up down bottom, and I, I love the constant pressure from Malaysia. Very controlled. They're not being hyper-aggressive, but they... They sort of push, get an objective, knock down a tower, take a team fight, what have you, back up, farm up their jungle, get their next round of items, farm up a bit, and as soon as they're ready and they've got everybody topped off, they just head straight for the base. Really not giving CSW any extra room to breathe than they have to. Nog is still just not that scary with only BOTs and Irradiance. It's a bit annoying for them not having the Wraith King reincarnation because they can't be as aggressive with his positioning, but mm -hmm. if he dies, you probably still get... You can probably still successfully win the team fight and break Raxus here. Naga Siren has to defend. Well, TP home now to end the healing up, but isn't really ready. KYXY gets initiated on. They'll use the Stampede into Lasso, and they drop the Pugna right away. Couldn't get the BKB off. That, that's a really nice pickoff, and that's going to stop the push right in its tracks. There you go. Malaysia so that was, will head back. okay, Batrider 4 stuff. That's what they were lacking last time. If they had the Batrider 4 stuff for the mid push, I think they actually hold their Raxus, mm -hmm. which is kind of crazy thing for like such a kind of cost-effective item on the offlane hero to do. Yeah, finally a very successful hold for CSW though. Just that one pick off and that'll be the end of it. Making more space that Naga to farm and closing the gap. Only 2,000 net worth behind the uh, the Shadow Fiend here. Alright, yeah, Naga will keep accelerating that farm but it will take some time to get online and does have to be I would say just, like, the pro I, KP's farming, like, like we saw Miracle's Naga yesterday. KP's farming come on similar rate, but isn't putting as much pressure. Like, we saw Na Naga by Miracle in the enemy jungle, farming the creep waves right as they spawn from the Radiant mm -hmm. side. And that's what something that KP just hasn't really done. Applied the same amount of pressure and creep skipping that Miracle did. Because Miracle right now would be in all kinds of, like, risky, stupid positions that just somehow he doesn't get caught out in. Yeah. Yeah, one of those heroes that... <laughs> Conceptually, is fairly straightforward with what you need to do on Radiance Naga, but there is that kind of layer yeah. of skill cap where the, the high end, uh, I think Miracle is just sort of unmatched on that front with his movements yeah. and sort of ability to find farm in places you wouldn't normally expect his, Naga to be his farming. His GPM Radiant's is the same as almost any attack. top Naga player out there, but it's, it's his decision making and that, that really sets him apart, I'd say. Yeah. Can they do this again? That They'll fist. try it. That Rider, this time he finds Mushi. Same story. Stampede flies through, but Mushi almost lives. The Requiem does so much damage. They get the kill on the Earthshaker right away. Not 2D gets stunned up. He'll certainly go down. Finger on the Centaur. Skywrath melts, and KP's like, where'd my team go, guys? Some buybacks will come out as Naga joins the party, but KP gets stunned up. Does have a Song of the Siren and may be forced to use it. Net does get killed by the Centaur, and Kenshi will get repelled as he will go down a second time. So it is a hold for CSW, but it's a costly one. They have to burn two buybacks for that. Or three, three buybacks, yeah, right? I, I, the two supports, Ooh. which isn't the biggest deal. Godot probably makes up for the money with uh, the kills he gets as a support, but yeah, that's, that's fairly costly. So it is about a 1,500 net worth trade uh, in favor of Malaysia. They don't force out the mm. Glyph, however, and they only do half damage to that tower. So kind of... I don't know if that was totally worth it, but could have been a lot worse, where at least if they do that again, they know that those three Radiant's heroes won't be able to buy back. It's tough, attack. they have no good counters to the, the Batrider Lasso gank, and they're using the Stampede when, as soon as the Lasso's there, so he can force mm -hmm. stuff and get the Stampede movement speed. So whoever gets Lasso gets kidnapped all the way back to like the Tier 4 towers. Yeah. Um, Mushi's not the ideal target, I think they'd rather get the Pugna pre-BKB, but this time around, Malaysia kind of knew that if Pugna's on the front lines, he's going to get killed. So they put Mushi there since he's the tankiest. Yeah, I, I think you kind of want to avoid ca catching Mushi in that kind of a scenario. I mean, the yeah. Requiem did so much damage there. and Mushi was kind of close to living. I mean, another half second, he could have mech'd, BKB'd, and then maybe gotten off the double Requiem. Uh, mm -hmm. With the BKB on, I think there was a small chance that that could have actually happened. But here's your big defensive item. Yes. Blink Dagger on Godot. Yeah. We'll see Malaysia just rinse repeat, though. As you said, Glyph's still available. 
I think they've realized the formula. It's like, put Mushi in the front and let him be the one who tanks that lasso. If you have everyone f far enough for back, the only, like, they don't want to lasso Mushi, but if he's the only one in the front lines and he's sieging their base, they kind of have to. Otherwise, they just straight up lose their base. So mm -hmm. Malaysia may just keep doing that. This time around, this is why I feel like they should have maybe done before the like, before that top first tower failed push under attack. Lane. Go right into the rush pit. Give themselves an Aegis. Naga will get a tier 2 tower while they're doing this, but I think they'll consider it a worthy trade. Naga's still not quite at that scary mark, but with 3,000 gold in the bank, he's fallen. getting there, God. They're gonna smoke like Pest. They're gonna be too late, though. Not gonna make it. Roshan Maybe they'll see a skirmish break out. If MY take that route, but no, they'll take the safe route. It is Mushi that grabs the Aegis, and Kenshi will have his ultimate up in about 10 seconds. So, seems they have all the tools they need to make this happen. Fireflies on cooldown, that's kind of shitty. I have 20 seconds, but it, Malaysia just happened to go in for this push right now. Not having Firefly to go over those trees to the right side is kind of painful stuff. Yeah, uh, Finger of Death cooling down just now. So, all right, Blink Dagger's up on net. And they get the D ward. That, that high ground ward just on this bottom lane is really important for the Batrider to, to know where he can Blink Lasso. It's nighttime now as well, so finding those those Lasso targets, like on the Pugna behind the, behind the push, is going to be impossible now. Mm -hmm. So, this Batrider's... <laughs> Kenji just blinks high ground. Yeah, he knows Bat Rider's gonna be fishing. Diamond's in. Bottom tower he's got the reincarnation, so he's feeling kind of yeah. cocky. pretty brave. They'll try and force out the glyph first thing. Mushi will oh, mech. KYXY does get caught by the lasso. KYXY goes down, but they get Godot in exchange. Music in the front lines. BK beyond, but taking lots of damage. Naga Siren gets hexed. Put inside the tornado. KP will live though. And now they're just trying to pull him off the base. They get a quick one Dyer's for one. Mushi throwing some auto attacks attack. onto the tower before making the escape. Naga burn, hurting him quite a bit. Ohio blinks out. Kenshi will get left behind. He'll get brought down. Makes it a one for two. And again, CSW hold pretty effectively. Tootie's Batman. He just finds people that I'm like, okay, he shouldn't be able to find these kills. Like Wraith King blinks high ground to scout out the bat. Mushi's on the front lines. Pugnus is chilling back and still gets caught by the bat rider. Mm -hmm. I don't even think. KYXY did anything too wrong with his positioning there. It was just 2D somehow not having his blink broken and finding the pickoff. Well, I guess the question now is how many more times can Malaysia afford to do this before this Naga just gets too big? Uh, she has now dethroned Mushi in the farming department. They're about even, but just sort of showing the state of where this game is going and that net worth slowly but surely going the way of the Dire. Still a lead for Malaysia and they do still have the Aegis on Mushi. So they'll have at least one more go at it. They've got about three minutes remaining. Uh, I think with that Aegis. Yeah. At this point, like, Malaysia just need to tank up. Like, Mushi's MKB was kind of nice, but I feel like you should have just gone for, like, a Scotty to tank up. Mm -hmm. And it, they have enough damage just by their levels and their spells, like the Pugna Blast, to bring down buildings. Like, if Mushi went Scotty, KOXY, it's going to go Ag Scepter now, which is the right the right choice. Just It's more HP. More than the Ag Scepter upgrade is just more survivability, so... Yeah. I feel if Mushi went Scotty over MKB, they could have maybe broken, because that one time Mushi got lassoed, he would have lived, but... Small things. I, it's it's always nice to get that secure the lake in with the extra damage from an MKB. Well, here's your smoke rotation from Malaysia. And Mushi, he'll be in the bottom lane. He'll be clearing up the creeps. And I don't know where they're going with this smoke. They move into the Roche pit. And I'm not going to find anyone. So just mad pings coming out from CSW as they prepare to defend the bush. Again, the glyph was not forced out last time. So they're feeling, feeling okay here. Two minutes left on the Aegis. When Dyer do have a good observe on this high ground cliff now. That has not been scouted. No yeah. gem. Actually, yeah, we go. They've we got go. the gem on the brew. They see it. Okay. Yeah. So denying vision for the, this high ground push. Very important, as said before. Dude, look at net. That's, look at this positioning. That's some sneaky Radiant's stuff. Top tower yeah, hit the F2. We'll look at, this is the radiant vision we're looking at right now. So... Net gets this ward down, they move into the tower. Net Dyer's finds the Bat Rider. 2D gets hexed. That'll at least stop his blink. Now the Brewmaster comes in and 2D. Net, though. I yeah. Don't know, probably wasn't, wasn't worth it. Will bring down Net, but I don't know. It keeps the cores alive. They get the tier 3 tower. Glyph comes out. Now they're just going ham on the barracks. Yeah, Net just, Net just put his team racks. He had to kind of suicide Dyer's for it. But hey, he distracted the Bat Rider and yeah. created the space the team needed. Oh, dunk from Godot, does a lot of damage. Now Musica comes in with follow-up. Kenshi does have a reincarnate here. Mushi pops the BKB. Requiem brings down the Horseman. Now KP, Song of the Siren. Is there any damage he can set up here? 2D, no lasso, but get some fire down. Godot will separate him. Wraith King will maybe utilize his ultimate. Risk barely survives. Now he finally goes down, but the slow gonna hurt him quite a bit. Is a barrel of laugh. Ohio comes in, crits him down, and it'll be Malaysia that come out swinging way ahead in this one. Naga Siren will buy back. 
Uh, two lanes of barracks down, they'll just go straight for the tier Radiant fours, and it looks like Malaysia may just be able to do it off this push. Yeah. Right. Four racks up. KP was kind of split pushing the top lane, brought down the tier three, but that was what forced out the line buyback just to Radiant's defend. But top are at this point, attack. you're down four racks, as Malaysia are really big. There's a lot of spare gold sitting around on Mushi with 6k. Uh, KWX was team free farm, and yeah, they'll break the tier fours here. Yeah, they'll get at least one of them. They know KP doesn't have an ultimate uh, anytime soon. I don't think they'll be able to win the game just straight off this push, but they do pretty crippling damage here. And as you mentioned, all this gold will translate to some items. Mushi will lose the Aegis, doesn't make the most out of it. KP trying to pursue, it. but here you go. Gets the regeneration in a perfect timing. Stampede, KP trying to lock him in place. Mushi does not have a TP here, only a BKB. They need to use it. There you go. Mr. Flare still does a lot. Ohio comes in, breaks it up, and makes enough space for his Shadow Fiend friend to walk to the tier two. Yeah. Or tier one, rather. We should PKB down to five seconds, so it doesn't even matter that he has to just pop it randomly. Yep. So, pretty good stuff for Team Malaysia there. They've got the triple blink daggers. Looks like Wraith King just gone for drums. Casual cloak for now. And KYXY, he should be close to his ags at this point. Uh, 1600 gold. All right, not as close as I, uh, I would have thought. Courier, what is, what's going on here? All right, Mushi going for an Assault Karas, and uh, Ohio will pick up a BKB Money here on the blue. But yeah, there's your full AC for the Shadow Fiend. Yeah, Mushi very, very farmed. He's played well in the Shadow Fiend this game. 4-1-11, one, the one time where he got lassoed bottom, like his team kind of won the fight afterwards anyways, and they're going to go for a smoke. Look for that killing blow onto see. So if you find the Naga, it's all over. Naga, no buyback right now. Yep, that's how you know Naga's up against the ropes. And KP gets hexed yeah. by Net. Oh, good night, sweet Naga. It was a noble effort, but you're going to get fingered. You're going to get chopped down. And Mushi, well, uses the BKB. And that'll make him immune to the Song of the Siren. And that's basically GG with that kill. Yeah. Naga Illusions expire at the top lane. And Firefly on cooldown once more. This this Firefly, very important. 20 seconds. Creepwave will be there just before Firefly's back up. And Malaysia going to get at least this tier 3 tower. No Glyph 2. So this is just... There's nothing they can do. Unless yeah. they somehow group up as five for, his, for a go dot five hero echo slam, which I don't think Malaysia will be stupid enough to do. Yeah, I don't think so either. And here we go. Kenshi going in, stops the Bat Rider, hits him with a stun. Barrel of laughs. He gets off the split. Now Tootie gets stunned up, life drained, and yeah, Bat Rider will get uh, essentially obliterated here. Instant buyback, though, as Kenshi in the front line will interrupt him once again. Bat Rider thinking this damn Wraith King, I'm going for vengeance, gets the lasso off, but now stuck in a tornado. Locks him in place for Musica to go pretty hard, but this is a Wraith King. He's coming right back to life. Not really the most satisfying target to take down. Net with a big stun onto Ohio. Still ready to fight Dyer's Musica. Pretty damn tanky on this Centaur, but they're just getting zoned out. Meanwhile, KYXY and Mushi just wrecking the top lane of Barracks. That'll secure the Mega Creeps, and now we'll see this one last skirmish as CSW get cleaned up. Ohio critting them down. Wicked Sick comes out, and yeah, now they'll go for the Tier 4. Game one in the bag. Overall, well played by Malaysia. Like, I think CSW at some point just need to look at their like general strategy. Like, but we can't just keep giving up all out of towers 20 minutes into the game, time and time again. They did it yeah. all three games against Invasion. Like they lost all their out of towers in really quick I yeah, I don't know. It, it just playing from the back foot. It works sometimes for them, but more often than not, it's yeah. not, not for the best. With this particular game, I think that's destined to happen, though. Like a Pugna versus a Naga, you know yeah. you're going to lose those Outer Towers. You know it's going to always be that kind of nail biter. It looks like your base is getting destroyed when Naga's desperately trying to scrap together that farm. And I think they played it pretty well. Honestly, 2D was the big underperformer for me. Musica had a fast blank, created some space on the Centaur, but the Bat Rider had a couple of key lassos after the Force Staff, but. He I mean, played before the Force Staff. Like yeah. The like he died twice bottom lane, especially that second death where he'd like. Yeah. TP'd in, got flanked. And then just kind of, it was the same story again. And he was 0-2-0 yeah. zero zero for the first 20 minutes. You just need your Batrider to get more done than that. Even if you're just picking off supports, you know, slow down Nets, blink dagger, just make Kenshi feel a little less comfortable. But Malaysia looking good. Game one in the bag, and yeah. we'll see. Can they take a quick 2-0 sweep, or will we move into an ace match? It's on CSW. They need to take it to stay in it here. But uh, we'll be back, and oh, Mott's on this overlay. <laughs> <Yeah>, I <that's laughs> was looking good. over that, I'm like, yeah, it's all right. All right, beautiful. Beautiful. So, all right, guys, we'll be back after this. Game two of Malaysia versus CSW, right around the corner.